Thank you all for joining us today. My name is Hillary Schneery and this is Gerard Vasio from Big Kaiser. We're going to be talking to you about ways that you can reduce setup time. Um, so it's called justifying new practices, increasing production through setup reduction. We would like to talk to you about some changes that we think you could make in your shops that would be worth your time and money. So Gerard off talking about work holding solutions and then I'll follow up talking about tool presetters. Okay, um, we have a lot of customers who make investments on a regular basis for productivity. A good example is say for instance a company might be running lathe with three jaw chucks and mills with vices and they may have a process that a year ago took an hour to change the setup so they went out and bought a new version of a three jaw chuck where they can change it out in 20 minutes. They bought a new version of a vise where they can change the jaws out in 10 minutes. And they take setup time from an hour down to maybe 15 minutes. It's a considerable savings. But in the old days, they also made maybe 50 parts a month. So they did the setup once a month, they were down for an hour. So they made that investment, now they're doing the setup in 20 minutes. But the problem is they're making that part once a week now instead of once a month. So they do that same setup four times a month and so by going from one hour to 20 minutes, you save 40 minutes, but now that you're doing it four times a month, you actually spend more time setting up because you're doing it, the processes over and over again on a weekly basis. So as the batch quantities shrink down, you find you're doing setups more often, and it puts you in an environment where you have to take a look at setup production. So I want to show you a movie here briefly that looks at setup production from a standpoint of lock and load. Walk up to the machine, set your part in there, Pull the trigger, you're ready to run. So what you're gonna see here is a person walk up to the machine, throw an air switch, load a fixture in, close the air switch, and now that fixture is oriented and locked in place, ready for running. Now he's gonna load a part. He's gonna cut that part in one orientation, and rather than unclamp the part and move it to another orientation, he leaves it in the fixture and moves the entire fixture. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at setup production from the standpoint of loading the fixture on and off the machine in seconds, and we're looking at process reduction because the operator does not have to unclamp the part from a cradle and move it to a secondary fixture to do the second off. He moves the entire assembly. So these are the types of changes you see that are very beneficial as your batch sizes shrink and you find yourself doing the same setup every week instead of once a month. The process time is reduced and so is the cutting time. So here's an example of if you didn't have this type of system, what you might be looking at. Constantly having to indicate this fixture in every time you run it. So this is what we try to eliminate when we look at setup reduction. And the other concept of process reduction, clamp the part one time and cut it as many as you can by moving the fixtures around. Not only saves you time in loading and unloading work, but it keeps you from having to build the fixture that picks up the geometry off the first off to cut the second off, or build a special fixture just to do the third off. So you can see that in the beginning of the movie, we could do one setup in 10 seconds, or we can do four or five in, in, in 10 minutes. So your shrinking batch sizes are no longer an issue in terms of how you amortize that setup time over the batch quantity. What you're looking here for is the ability to take your existing components, your existing work holding, your existing fixturing, and simply retrofit onto it retention knobs that allow you to do the positioning and clamping. Here's an example of a part that uh, was previously made in three separate fixtures. One fixture on a lathe, and then two fixtures on the milling application. They redesigned the fixture so they can run one lathe and two milling operations while the part's still in the same cradle. The end result is that before putting the retention knobs on their fixture plates, they would spend a total of nine hours in setup, and they took that down to three hours of setup time. Additionally, the process time. Because the process time included the time for the operator to unscrew the cap screws, take the part out of one fixture, move it to another fixture, screw it into that fixture, and then hit cycle start. That was not part of setup, that was part of the process. So by moving the part in the fixture, we also took the process hours from 25 hours down to 17 hours. 
So these are the types of cost savings that you can occur both in setup and in process reductions. There's really no limit as well to the size of the work tables that you can use this technology on. It can be anything from a small medical part to aircraft wings, entire components. 60 feet is not unpractical for uh, something of this technology to hold. Here's an example of a very large table. There are a total of nine receivers, uh, one and a half meters in uh, Y axis and two meters in X between each of the pole locations. And with those nine receivers, they are holding um, 35,000 pound fixture in place. And they're able to walk these fixtures in and out of the machine in about 15 minutes before it used to take them about a half a day to get a fixture in and out of the machine. So these are the types of things that we're looking at in terms of producing more product in the same amount of time, more throughput. And here's an example again of this same pull stud retention where we actually put the knobs right onto the workpiece itself and don't even bother making a fixture. There's an existing bolt circle pattern on the part. We simply attach the threads to the size that it carries in the part and move them directly in and out of the machine with no fixturing. So there's also ways to save money on you know, producing fixturing and by making less fixturing or no fixturing at all. So that's the, the work holding section. Um, to summarize it, we're really looking at different ways to describe what is lean when you start looking at you know, efficiencies in work holding. And you will see a tremendous decrease in the amount of hours for setup. You'll see an increase then for machine capacity and throughput, along with some positioning errors that may go away. If you hold the part once and move it while it's being held with fixturing, rather than take it out of one fixture, put it in another, you don't run the risk of clamping on a chip and contamination in the, in the clamping process that would give you inaccuracies. You also may be able to eliminate some fixed drain. You'll probably find yourself rearranging your shop and creating less travel distances for your fixed drain and work holding because it's now palletized and portable. I'm going to turn it over back now to Hillary and she's going to continue in talking about presetting. Okay, so if any of you are unfamiliar with the presetter, I'm just going to kind of briefly go through that just in case. Um, basically, a tool presetter is something you can use to measure your offsets of your tool. Um, you can do a variety of different geometries. Uh, you can adjust a tool in the spindle right there, um, as long as it's a minor adjustment. Um, you can certify your measurements, um, any type of tool. And you can also ensure that you have the correct components and that the tool is assembled correctly. This is what a presetter um, should look like. This is a Speroni Magis. Kind of in the center, front and center, is the tool that you're measuring. It goes right into a spindle. We can adapt to different taper sizes. Um, then there's a camera on the left, and on your right side is the light source. So you end up with a profile image on the viewing screen, um, which is what kind of that insert looking dark item is on the right. And then on the left, you have kind of your, your data. So you can save your measurements, you can save your tools and configurations, jobs, that sort of thing. Ways that your tool presetter can integrate with what you've already got in place. Um, first, we have the direct NC link. So you can actually post your offsets directly to your machining centers. So you don't have that extra step. You basically you know, hit a button and it'll automatically send those offsets. You can also interface with your CAD CAM system. So when you're developing your part and kind of coming up with that theoretical tool list, you can use the remote data loader on the presetter and have a single database so you don't have that redundant information. So it doesn't add any extra step. It's a seamless process. Similarly, we've got um, where we interface with the RFID chip. So if you use BALA for something like that, we can automatically scan that at the presetter. It calls up that tool and, and you can go ahead with your measurements at that point. If you've already developed your own tool management system or you just have a, a third party type of system, we can interface with anything like that. You don't need to reinvent the wheel to be able to work with the presetter. Also integration with your storage system. So if you have, you know, like a Ramstar or some sort of inventory system in place, we can also interface with those. Here's a very old picture of a tool room. Speroni was actually the first developer of the tool room concept. I think this drawing's from the early 70s it looks like. So in the front you see the four tool presetters and then the computer, that's actually the punch paper, those big rolls there. Behind that is an inspection machine and then you see the inventory and those three columns at the very top. 
So you can see how it kind of keeps everything with those functions all in one place. Here again, showing from each step along the way how your tool room kind of plays a part in each step. So in study, so when you're um, developing how you're going to build your part in your CAM software, and then I'll, again in the manufacturing process, um, you can see what you have in your inventory and, and measure and go on that way, and then outputting those offsets directly to the machines. So it's, it's a part of every step along the way. Now not everyone has a tool room, but somewhere in every shop, even if you have one machining center, um, all of these functions take place. So you've got your inventory, you've got where you're assembling and disassembling tools, um, you've got your software side of it, um, cleaning, you've got some sort of inspection where you would weed out tools that need to be scrapped or reworked or something. Um, so in your shop somewhere, all of these processes are happening and you can see the flow chart here where they really do interact with the tool presetter and um, it, it helps to keep all of that organized. So now to the part that probably everybody wants to see is how numerically or, or financially a presetter is going to impact your shop. So this chart is showing you um, comparing kind of that center column, the tool adjusted, that's assuming you have a tool presetter. So you're doing that adjustment offline on your tool presetter, as opposed to the far column where you're doing it on your machining center. So no matter what, when you put a tool in the machine, you, you have those 20 seconds of clamping. And again, this is an example. It might vary a little bit, but you'll get the idea. Um, now, in your machining center, if you're going to, to um, go ahead and kind of preset your tool there, then you'll cut your test cut and then measure that, which you'll see here, it takes 180 seconds or three minutes. Then you need to enter that compensation value and then um, measure and verify your bore. So total time when you have a presetter, just 70 seconds compared to just when you do it in your machining center, 250. So again, for each tool that you're measuring in your machine, you're taking three minutes longer. So carrying that information over to this slide, three minutes per tool, let's say you have eight tools per job, change them over twice a day, so 16, um, that multiplies out three times 16, so 48 minutes. 250 workdays a year, we're taking out the weekends and holidays and that sort of thing. So you have a savings rate of 200 hours. We've got somewhat of a modest machining rate here of $60, multiplying that $12,000 per year per shift. You likely have more than one machine. Let's say you've got six dedicated to this tool presetter. So you have the potential to save $72,000 per year with just the addition of one tool presetter. Here's another way to look at kind of the similar information. So again, let's say you have eight tools, but changing them twice a day, we're up to 16. Your machined piece, we'll give the example, it takes eight minutes to, to make each work piece. When you figure it out with your downtime of those three minutes, you are able to pr uh, produce 60 pieces when you've got the tool presetter because you don't have that downtime. On the other hand, you could only produce 54 if you're trying to measure your tools in there. So if your fixed cost is $2,000, it's going to cost you a lot less money per piece when you're using a tool presetter. So you have that savings of $3.71 per part. If you multiply that by your 60 pieces per day, you're saving $200 a day just on the one machine.